and welcome to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us this week, we have Tom Webster. Howdy. And Adam Jordan. Hello. How are you guys Hi. doing this week? Oh tired. my god. Yeah. Tired, I'm but fucking, not as tired as Tom. I'm fucking exhausted. <laughs> oh my god. Exhausted. Soon. What? Soon we will we will have news about why Tom has been exhausted for three weeks in a row, but but not today because it's, Tom it's good, is a, good a wimp and can't yes. man up. Exactly, yes. I, I need to get good about at this life thing. I just I've been playing on easy mode too long. I just decided to ramp up the difficulty, stop summoning help, and you know, yeah, it 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 got real. <laughs> Well, see, if you get good at life, we can't make fun of you anymore. I like you not being oh. good at life. It's okay. entertaining. Okay. Every That's group the kind of, of friends Every we group are. of friends needs to have one of those. What, just one person who's <laughs> so not good at life? It's always calamity the whole time, always. <laughs> exactly. It's the spice, <laughs> I can do that. It's the sp- spice of the group. <laughs> yeah. You never but know. T- like, the guy who sucks at life is just as valuable to the group as the wild card character. Because they just <laughs> both bring so much. What the fuck? I think I know who the wild card character is in our group. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and what happens to those two guys is they either they either become the the guy who goes into like the Marine Corps or something and gets his shit together and and comes out like after five years he's like yeah I've got my whole life on track it's amazing I've got a wife two kids a nice house a decent car what life isn't so hard and then you've got the guy who's like. Yeah, I think I'm going to be a nudist hippie in, like, Southern Oregon or I something. I, I think I know who I that know. is, too. <laughs> and then he yeah, ends up I think just I living. <laughs> he just ends up living in Colorado instead. Yep. Yeah. He gets to I Denver and he's like, I kind of like it here. <laughs> it fits right in. So, so what have you guys been up to? Because my life has just been nonstop bullshit 24-7. Being sick. Oh, nice. Sucks. Being sick sucks. Do you do you uh, do you turn into the the male stereotype of being a big baby when you're sick? Um, not are too you one bad. of those. Are you okay? I'm okay until it gets to my stomach. Once my uh, stomach gets upset, like oh screw just, that. This goes with me and um drinking as well, where you know I can go hard, and if I just have a little bit of a headache the next morning, no problem. My stomach's a little turned, man. I'm laying yeah. on the couch all day, watching football, vegging out, oh, not yeah. moving. I will pray you, to the gods just gotta, not to have to vomit. <laughs> you just got to get good. <laughs> yeah, and the worst thing is, you always think I don't want to get sick. I don't want to get sick, and then eventually yeah, you go but and you do know it. That as soon as you do, you'll feel better. Exactly. It's that inner turmoil. It's like, dude, but should I just then. do it? <laughs> yeah, wow. but yeah. Luckily, this yeah, time it's just sore throat and sinus. But my sore throat's okay. gotten so bad that without That's medicine, manageable. I feel it in oh. my ears. Oh, whoa. Jesus. So, like, wow. I'm hopped up on Dayquil and ibuprofen for anti-inflammatory and pain relief nice. and congestion. Eric oh knows how to God. party. <laughs> Eric knows how to party. <laughs> so, um, I'm doing it. On Dayquil train. Sh- I'm sure someone listening is going to be like, dude, that's a death cocktail. Um, just let <laughs> take me know it, take before it with I some, OD. some nice scotch. Yeah. Ooh. Now I got me actually some salted caramel tea, so I'm being nice to my oh. throat. That actually sounds pretty good. Yeah, it does. I love tea. I have tea, some, some tea right here. English breakfast. I have got uh, Lipton. Mm. Yeah. That, nice is tea. A, that is a large mug of tea. I love my yeah. large mug. Adam got me into some of the finer teas. Like I liked, um, there's a stash um, liquor, uh, mint kind of tea. Oh yeah, so Moroccan good. mint. Moroccan mint, so good. Ooh. I'm like a fan mint. of spearmint tea. Yeah. It's like chewing a, a piece of Wrigley's gum as you're drinking a cup of tea. It's amazing. And Minty nine, green tea is great. Nine times out of ten with that, I won't add sugar. But that one time you add sugar, it tastes like fucking candy. <laughs> it's just so good. Yeah. It is so amazing. So um have any of you guys been doing any video games this week? No, but yeah. I did drink a nice hot glass of Tazo Passion Tea. It's that hot pink tea. It's really oh, yeah. good stuff. Add, add a little bit of sugar. You can even add just a, a teeny bit of cream to it just to, to uh, make it that much better. It's nice. amazing. It's like a tea sort of milkshakey thing. 
It's wonderful. It's fantastic, but it stains like a son of a bitch. Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> I guess we can sidebar into video games if you guys are done with the 72 Food Connector podcast. <sighs> I'm sorry. Had to cut the food short. Well, the <sighs> drink short, rather. <laughs> So my week has actually been very, very, very light, uh, like last week, uh, but I did get in some new games. Of course, I played some Dark Souls 2. I killed a giant spider by myself. I didn't even have any help. So that was fun. Um, still really easy. It's yeah. just because I've gotten good, though. I got so you good. Just, it's just so just easy. You got too good. You got yeah. too good. Um, I, I've been playing some CSGO because I didn't want to, you know, get, sit down with my Dark Souls and, like, go full force for a couple hours. It's like, in the morning, I've got 15 minutes to play a game before I leave for work. Don't have a lot of time, so I jumped into CSGO, played some Deathmatch, played some gun game, played a couple rounds. It's fun. It's gun, always fun. Gun game is the only thing on CSGO I can do, because I am trash yeah. at CSGO. Yeah. <laughs> you know, even even though I play rarely, I'm always hovering, and this this is going to be a testament to their matchmaking. I'm always hovering like right near the middle. I'm not great by any means, but I'm not pub trash most of the time. <laughs> it's it's been good. I love CS:GO, and I'm I, I go I'm ahead. totally pu- I'm totally pub trash <laughs> yeah. all day. And I don't know. You killed that guy that one time. Yeah, okay, we blasted the hell out of that mm-hmm. door that one time too. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I loaded up the original Counter Strike just to do some compare and contrast because oh, yeah. I love the original Counter Strike. Now my laptop CS:GO just runs like a dog, um, so it's really difficult. Um, and probably because everyone who's still playing 1.6 is a fucking god at first person oh, yeah. shooters, purists. Um, <laughs> but even more than that, it almost feels like CS:GO runs smoother. I don't know if it's the frame rate or the animations or what, but the original hmm. Counter Strike feels a little jerky to me. Um, I'm not hmm. sure why that is, but it, it was interesting. Uh, I definitely had a better time playing CS:GO even with the lower frame rate. Hmm. Um. Other than that, tonight I loaded up Elite Dangerous again because oh, nice. I, I needed to sit, veg out in my spaceship, go fly around the stars a little bit, get shot up by some pirate guys. It's just a man in a spaceship in the vast blackness of space. <laughs> I love Elite Dangerous, but it has yeah. got to be one of the most boring, most exciting games I've ever played. <laughs> it's got the yeah. uh, Daisy effect. Yeah, where yeah. it is so open, so much nothing but maybe occasional NPCs, and then all of a sudden, mm-hmm. out of nowhere, here comes this badass that's going to try to kill you. Yeah, yeah, and then you get locked into this amazing dogfight, and you take him out by the skin of your teeth, and then you limp to a space station to repair all your shit, and you realize, holy shit, he was carrying a shit ton of gold or something, and you sell it on the commodities black market and make a bunch of money. It's it, and then it, that moment, like that that two minute moment is you know book ended with 20 30 minutes of let me fly from station to station which are 15 minutes apart and nothing happens there's some nice ambient soundtrack you watch the stars fly by and literally nothing happens in the game uh it does a very very good job of uh simulating the absolute boringness and emptiness of space but uh it's a good game to sit down and chill so i had a so an electronic soundtrack in the background just kind of fedged out with my spaceship. It was a good time. But that's all I've been doing this week. Yeah. Nice. So I have been playing a couple of games, and I know Irk wants to talk about one, but this wouldn't be the 72 Pin Connector podcast if I didn't bring up Rocket League. Uh, two sentences, I'll keep it short. Uh, the Ice Charger came out from Fast and the Furious. Uh, it's a solid car. I, I think it's kind of ugly because they messed with the tires because it's Fast and Furious, but whatever. Uh, it's an old Charger. That's pretty sweet. Uh, I also have been playing with the new car, Endo, which I am loving so far. It's so cool. Looks like a Lamborghini. Uh, plays really well, though. So I've been playing a lot of that. And that's it. That's all the Rocket League talk. That's it. No more. This whole podcast. That's all. Um, But the other game which I really wanted to to talk about a lot is player unknowns battlegrounds. 
That game has been the shit. Yes. Also known as DayZ, but uh, earlier access without zombies. Uh, sorta. No, it's it's, it's faster Daisy. So Daisy was this big open, do what the fuck you want, just live. That is not what this is. Mm-hmm. This, no, is this is match, much more match fast. based gameplay. Yeah, the the matches run about. If if you make it far into the match, it runs about thirty minutes. Yeah. So there's not. I mean, it's still slow. It's still a slow shooter. It's not Call of Duty. It's not Battlefield. But the beauty is, you can make of it what you want. Mm-hmm. You can be a survivalist who hides and just kind of slowly goes around. Mm-hmm. Or you can be the guy who drops in the big cities, gets shit quick, and starts to kill fuckers. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. The fact that this game exists and has gotten such a huge following so quickly is probably a testament to such a missed opportunity by the DayZ dev team. I, this could have been a game mode. It didn't have to be a full release, but mm-hmm. someone else beat them to the punch. Well, and it, it kind of amazes me. It's not just this. Uh, H1Z1, um, King of the Kill, is this. And yeah. it is very popular. But this has came out, and this has seemed to take the, essentially just the steam from it, and mm-hmm. everyone's jumping on this. Everyone seems to love this. I think I think it's a combination of good timing and just good execution. Because As, these battle royale games have have started to get more and more popular with stuff like Daisy H one Z one. There was another one that came out like a year ago. I can't remember what it there's is. There's like an Arma three mod for this. Yeah, and- yeah, yeah. But um, this this is really good, and I think. This is one of those games where releasing an early access is probably a good thing for them because of the timing. I also if they would have waited too long, I feel like it may have might have missed its its mark. This game, as much as I like it though, I also feel once it's out of early access, it's already gonna have lost half of its user base. That's kinda, also kinda very like possible. Arc. Yeah. But the good thing about Ark was really popular for a long yeah. while, but yeah. you know, when I wanted to jump into it, it was kind of on the tail end of the community falling off, so I didn't buy it, because I didn't want to be the only guy playing on a server. Yeah, that's true. But um, the early access is feature complete, so um, it's, it's not, it doesn't feel like there's stuff missing. You know, it feels like a full game. Um, it's kind of buggy at parts, and yeah. not amazingly optimized, but that's the early access part so we will definitely have a montage up hopefully by early next week that will show you some of the cool shit we found in the game as well as some of the crazy ass bugs yeah so we should probably explain the game a little bit for people that aren't familiar with the style yeah Um, it's a battle royale game which basically means there's a hundred people in in each map um you get dropped off from a plane you decide which part of the map you want to you know drop into and uh you start with nothing You scavenge for supplies and last man standing, basically. And by supplies, we don't mean um, daisy cans of food. You're looking for guns and medical supplies and armor. That's it. Yeah, guns, armor, attachments, grenades, medical supplies, stuff like that. And to keep the games going fast, after every few minutes, there's going to be the circle that appears on the map and slowly constricts to a given point. And if you're outside that point, you start to take damage. And what this does is it funnels all the players down to one central point in the map that is random every time. So this Mm -hmm. makes the games not be able to last more than maybe 35 minutes max. Because after this is this is the killer feature of Battlegrounds. Mm -hmm. Um, Without this, the games would be slow. The matches would take forever. You get that one guy that would you know, find that one glitch in the map and sit underneath a tree all day so he would, by default, win. Um, I I think the weird, like, EMP field thing they've got going on is possibly the best thing they brought to the table. It was so important. I wouldn't even have considered playing this game without that. Uh, Once I saw that, I saw that the game, while having that, that slow Arma kind of feel to it, still is quick enough to keep your attention and as someone who didn't get into Daisy, I didn't play any of that. This has really hooked me. 
And since it is such a big map, you still get that thrill. It's not as mm-hmm. much as Daisy, but you still get that thrill when you right. see that person. You see him yeah. out across the field running to the house that they have no clue you're at. Right. There are gunshots west. Everybody duck. You know, look out the windows, peep. There's times where you're holed up in a house. You're at a good spot on the map. You're within the big circle. Um, you've got decent supplies, and you're basically just kind of waiting it out at that point. And you hear this car coming. You're like, oh, where's the car coming from? You see it. You know, you're looking out the window, you see the car, how many people are in it, uh, did they stop at the house? When they stop at the house, you know, you get so anxious. And um, it, it's just cool, like, there's those moments where you're hiding, and they pass by, and you're like, ooh, okay. You know? Or you will end up with a moment where you think you're in a good spot. The spot's awesome. You're going to camp this spot and fucking win. And then the next <laughs> circle has you outside the range, so you have to fucking move. Yeah, that's that's one thing I was going to ask you guys about, because I, I watch your stream for a little bit and I watch mm-hmm. some YouTube videos on it, but I actually haven't played the game. Mm-hmm. I, the the constantly constricting map size, mm-hmm. does it remove a lot of the tactical play or do you have enough time between, you know, circle constrictions or map constrictions where you can actually use oh, okay. some tactics to flush people out so- or hold yourself up? There's there's two aspects, I think, um, of strategy that's involved with this. Um, it, it constricts on time intervals, so you've got time in between before it starts constricting. And you know so, where it's going to constrict, too. Yeah, you have say, two circles. You have, yeah. this is the next circle, and here's the current circle. And when the time mm-hmm. point hits, it starts to constrict from where it's at mm-hmm. to where it's going. Yeah, it'll say restricting play area in two minutes. And then it'll start after that. And then you still have time you know, as it's constricting, it doesn't happen instantly. So you have time to like try to beat it, you know? So, and, so could you just, if you're, if you've got some guys in the house and you know, you mm-hmm. drive up in your Jeep, could you just say, yeah, we'll just wait them out and, and wait for them to, you know, get hit by whatever EMP field there is. And, and you can, you can try to outrun it knowing that they're probably going to die. If, if you, they try to get out before then well odds are if you're going to be able to camp that house they're going to be able to get a shot on you mm-hmm. that's true and getting the jump on it is a big benefit if you get the first shot in it really helps if you have a gun that shoots at range yeah and it- if you've got a gun with range and you're inside that circle you can prowl and view the outside of that circle knowing people are going to be rushing in to avoid the emp oh that's so- interesting There's that aspect of the tactics, too. And as the constriction can ruin your tactics if you're outside of it, it also plays an interesting tactic when you have to move. Because you start to think, Mm -hmm. do I just get inside the circle to be safe? Or do I want to go deep in the circle and try to position myself where I hope the circle will end up? I've been in matches where we choose this one building, and it turns out to be the building that everything ends on. So you have the upper hand of being able to camp out the rest of the match. But what sucks is if it gets close, but you're not quite right, you have to leave that building at the end when you know everyone else is watching that building. Very nice. So it adds a lot of different strategy to it. A whole lot. I'm, I'm looking at this game, though, and I'm, I'm wondering how long can this last? Because right now they've got, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but they've got this play mode. This is the game. Mm-hmm. This is the whole game. Yep. So what is there to keep the player base coming back for more? And I, I saw that there were some cosmetic items. Um, mm-hmm. There's, you know, uh, time-based mm-hmm. unlocks and stuff like that. But, you know, DayZ had a, an incredible following. And then it, it didn't, like, die instantly. It wasn't like, you know, the... Uh, Monday Night Combat or, or anything like that, but, mm-hmm. you know, it had a very slow trickling out, and, and it still got fans. It's not completely dead. But yeah. what's to stop this game from, you know, hitting this peak in early access so early, like it seems like they've done, and then fizzling out over the next three months or so, and not being worth buying at that time? So, the chat is actually answering a lot of your questions right yeah. now. <laughs> so, uh, Soul points out they are rumors of a first-person only mode, because you can right now toggle. Um, also, as well as the game plan is, once this leaves early access, it's going to be moddable. Which will be interesting because you might end up splitting your player base with that. But at the same time, you have a big enough player base that doesn't matter. 
And yeah. also, as Delaz is pointing out, H1Z1's been out for two years and still has over 100K players a day. I didn't realize it was that much. I didn't either. It's impressive. Well, it's if, very impressive. If you ever look on Twitch when it's going, it, it's always up at the top with views. It's very mm-hmm. popular. But also, I think that just something as simple as adding a second map. Well, I shouldn't say a simple, yeah. because making a map for this kind of game actually oh, yeah. is very intensive because oh. all the spawn mm-hmm. points and shit. Mm-hmm. But I think making a second map would add a whole lot of flavor. As well second as second map would be incredible. As potentially adding one more gun for this, one more yeah. gun for that. Mm-hmm. Different things Absolutely. like that is still, it's really a lot of different things they can do to add just a little tweak that'll keep a lot of people here. Mm-hmm. As well okay. as um, this dev hasn't pissed off people to my no- knowledge yet, as much as, well, this game hasn't. As much mm-hmm. as H1Z1, which was initially supposed to be free, and then they split it into two games and make people buy the second one and a lot of really shady garbage. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering, because I, I might pick this up in a month um, if the community is still around. And I'm, I'm kind of hoping, because it looks like a lot of fun, I just I don't want to buy this game and have it be dead the next week. This, yeah. this game isn't going anywhere anytime soon. I wouldn't okay. think so. We're going to put so that many... in, our, uh, in our clip show at the end of the year. Yeah. It's like, wow, I can't believe that died in like six days. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, just all at once for no reason. Everybody loved it and then they just yeah. stopped. Everyone quit all <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be fine. But I think it's about all we got for Battlegrounds. It's a good game. Uh, you'll see some content up for us on it as well as we have been streaming it quite often. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested, you can always just jump in, check out a VOD, or just watch our streams. We'll have plenty of them. Um, Adam, did you play anything else, or has that pretty much been it for you? Um, No, that's pretty much been it for me. How about you? Um, So, obviously, what we just talked about. um, Played Rocket League, as you did. Haven't got the Endo yet, so I've not had the luxury of being able to try that. Uh, A little bit of Binding of Isaac. Um, so the thing nice. about battlegrounds is when you're playing with a squad, you wait until your squad's dead. So it's really nice to have a game like Binding of Isaac that you can pull up on the side while you're waiting. Hmm. It's very, uh, very nice to have. And then, um, also I've been playing a little bit more of has been heroes and I have been meaning to stream it. I've been feeling like shit. So I didn't want to move the switch setup up to my computer so I could do it. But I promise sometime soon I will be streaming some Has Been Heroes so everyone can check that out. It is still really fucking fun. I have finally beat a round of it. And it's kind of Isaac-ish where you beat it once and now more unlocks. So you have a longer run next time. As well as I have discovered how the character swapping works. They have three tiers of character and you're forced to have one of every tier. So it's still really, um, it's really fun still. I think I'm going to keep going with it for sure. Nice. Okay. So I think that's, I actually, I forgot one game. I totally forgot one game until you mentioned, um, you know, Binding of Isaac, because I have also been playing a roguelike on and off, uh, in between certain things this week, uh, ancient domains of mystery, uh, Hmm. Adam. Um, you can find that at adam.de. It's actually a, a free game. You can buy it on Steam if you want to support the developers, but you don't have to. You can just download the game. Um, it's a classic, super classic, turn-based roguelike with, you know, the, the ASCII art interface and all that stuff. Um, and I've been playing that in between, you know, waiting on stuff to install or uh, waiting on phone calls or emails just because I can pop in and pop out and actually feel like I've gotten somewhere. Um, it's a really, really good roguelike. Um, if you're into, you know, the, you will die a hundred times and there's a million <laughs> different features and there's 27 gods that you can pray to and you better not pray to the wrong one. Cause he'll smite you, um, oh, in a hundred different classes, you know, stuff like that. Um, so I've been going through, it's this chaos knight, which is this guy that's got like thorns and a billion eyes and he's an orc. And I just walk up to literally anything because I'm playing the chaotic evil 
archetype in this run and just smashing everything with a great hammer. Just like there, there will be a shopkeeper will be like, oh, hey, I've got this great stuff. It's for sale and I'm going to give it to you really cheap because you're scary looking and I'll just kill him and take all the stuff. Mm-hmm. It's a really great way to play a game. You can just kill everyone. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, go go check that out if you're looking for a roguelike. Uh, it's free. So if you hate it, delete it. Um, if you really like it, jump on, uh, buy it on Steam, support the devs. It's it's just a good time. Uh, and you don't have to play with the text interface. They do have a uh, what's called a tiles mode in classic roguelikes, where it's got um, you know character models and little weapon art and stuff like mm. that. So it's a lot of fun. And with that, I think that's pretty much all we've been playing this week. And by pretty much, I mean I know it is because Player Unknown has gotten way too much of our time. Yes. Um, so we got a little bit of news for you, and then we'll be getting out of here and make this a short one. But there was some really, really cool fucking news that dropped yesterday. Um, Microsoft Scorpio, Xbox Scorpio, they l- allow Digital Foundry access to it. They let them come in, check out some gameplay, and tear one apart, check out the specs. This thing is legit. It's built out of 100% 24 karat solid gold. It runs at 2,000 teraflops. It has 900 gigabytes of RAM. It's got an ephemeral uh, solid state quantum hard drive that doesn't run out of space because it stores it on the bits of the atoms of the known universe. Uh, it and has. also, it's got uh, a recreated Halo 1. And uh, multiplayer only has Blood Gulch. It has some of a fraction of that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, pretty much it's a six petaflop thing, whatever. I don't put much stock into that. But um, some of the actual specs that people can relate to, it's a 50% increase on the RAM. It is, instead of a 1.9 8-core, it is a, I think, 2.3 8-core processor. Um, it's a highly customized GPU, and this is important because they are running on DirectX 12, so they have optimized the piss out of this thing to run with DirectX 12. This is really the big feature. Um, so they've done side-by-sides with the original Xbox and the Scorpio with Forza 6, or the, whatever the last Forza. On the original Xbox, it is running at 1080p, 60 frames, with only 10% overhead left. With the Scorpio, it is running at 4K, 60 frames, with 30% overhead left. That is four times the fucking resolution and three times the overhead remaining. This system is This is impressive. This is very impressive. So, um, the other big sign point. This is going to be the only console out there with a 4K Blu-ray player. For most people, that may not matter. But with things like Planet Earth 2 coming out, the PS4 Pro won't play that properly for you. It won't do the 4K. It'll output 4K, but it can't read 4K discs. This is going to be the only platform you can go to to read 4K discs. Hmm. And Planet Earth 2 is going to be so pretty. Yes, it is. I, it's going to be beautiful. I have a 4K TV. Depending on the price point of this, it might happen so I can watch that, damn it. Yeah. So early on, you you mentioned what the Scorpio petaflop. <laughs> um, I'm not even. What does that mean? <laughs> it's like a belly flop, but way more impressive. You do a front flip oh. and then belly flop. It's pretty much a oh. um, unit of work. It's gonna pretty much how much horsepower this fucking thing has. I thought at the first the first time you said it, I thought you said pentaflop, and I'm oh. like, oh, it runs on five floppy disks. <laughs> yes, this, they're actually going <laughs> no away from this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just five taped together in one big square. They're doing three yes. and a half inch floppies. So you have mm-hmm. to be switching out at a rate of uh, two floppies per second to be able to play games sufficiently. Jumping yeah, between it also the right runs, ones. It also runs Windows 3.11 for work groups. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so there is one interesting thing about Scorpio that Soul kind of alludes to that I think is interesting. So mm-hmm. this right here is bringing 4K gaming more affordable than even PCs right now. 
Because to buy a 4K gaming PC, it's going to cost you a lot. This, granted, Scorpio is probably going to be a $500 console. Well, yeah. But. But it's going to be running games at a higher resolution, better than my PC will currently. And also, every current game is supposed to get a performance boost from it as well. So you'll see more stable and higher frame rates. But the problem, I think, still is crossplay is something Microsoft's been harping more and more with all Mm -hmm. of their first party games going crossplay. So for those people wanting high performance, if they already have a PC, why are they going to want to buy a Scorpio? They're, they will um, get some, but I mean, they're starting to cut their own market by having the cross play to, a, degree, I, to a, a small part of it, but a part of it. Well, I, I don't think it really makes that much of a difference. Um, mostly because in, in I, you know, as a, PC gamer all the way and console hater, uh, you know, there's like 10 people in the world who are PC gamers compared to, you know, the people who have consoles. If they can, they can have, they can completely ignore the PC gaming market and it wouldn't hurt them at all. They, yeah. they can chop up that market six ways to Sunday and they don't give a shit. It's a drop in the bucket. It's like, the revenue they got from selling Windows Media Player codecs kind of drop in the bucket for Microsoft. Uh, this company prints money. Yes, but yeah. here's, here's the thing. It's not the idea of neglecting the PC gamer. It's the fact that the PC gamer may not have to buy the console anymore. Yeah, but uh, they weren't going to anyway. That's right? not true. Someone, yeah. someone That's like not me, true. I'm not going to buy... I, I might buy Gears, but I'm not going to buy an Xbox for Gears. I don't, I don't care that much. I might buy the new Halo game if it's really good, but I'm not going to buy an Xbox for the new Halo game. Now, but if that's, they've that's got a because cool you, thing... That's because you can play it on PC. If you can't, right. you don't have an option. That's what I'm saying. They're allowing right. you a revenue or an avenue to play the game without the console. No, but but the difference is they're getting some amount of money because I bought Gears and Halo, whereas I don't actually give a shit enough about those franchises to buy their hardware and their game. So mm. I can either buy none of it or I can buy a piece of it. Some right? do, So they're though. getting yeah. something. But, there's an mm-hmm. opportunity cost there. Yes, but I am a guy who will buy a console for the game. Yeah, there are there's plenty of those them. people. Yeah, and now they're allowing those people not to have to do that. Uh, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal, um, mostly because of the size of the PC gaming market, uh, mm-hmm. mostly because they're banking it all up in software sales anyway, because it doesn't even cost them money to print it on discs anymore, right? You, you open up the Windows Store and you hand them your 50 bucks and you walk away. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I'm just wondering if they eventually will cut in. But either way, I think the Scorpio is really fucking rad. It is the strongest console out there. Um, unlike the PS4 Pro, this feels like it's not an iteration, but potentially a new console. Yeah, I would agree with mm-hmm. that. This doesn't feel like the, the PS4 Pro kind of, hey, it's the same PlayStation you've known and loved, but it can do VR now. And why would I buy this? Because uh, it can do VR now. Uh, the Scorpio is a massive, massive upgrade. This is, this is not added horsepower. This is a, you know, from the ground up rework of this architecture. And the other great thing is they announced it all now. So they, in, um, E3, they don't have to touch on the Scorpio release. They can start showing you games on Scorpio. Yeah. They could show you the new Mm. crackdown on Scorpio. They could show you there's going to be a new halo on Scorpio and see how beautiful it is. Mm-hmm. Right. So it seems to be blurring the line between console generations even more than the PS4 Pro did. Agreed. Because you've got this giant upgrade, but it's still the same console. Well, we they haven't outwardly said that. All they've said is that everything that comes out for the foreseeable future on Scorpio mm-hmm. will also it'll 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 they'll both play. If it works on mm-hmm. Scorpio, it has to work on one. Keep in mind. That tends to be the trend when you make a new console anyway. I mean, the PS2 games honestly didn't stop being made until just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. PS3 just got Persona 5. So, I mean, old consoles always get long-term support. It's true. just with, I'm wondering if this is, you know, three years from now, they start saying, you know what, Xbox One support's done. 
games going forward, just take full advantage. Don't even worry about Xbox One. Yeah, I'm wondering if we'll see kind of the Appleization of of the console market where you've got, you know, the Xbox and the Xbox S and the PlayStation and the PlayStation S. And, you know, if you buy the PlayStation, you're a budget gamer and you're going to get the shit games and the, you know, eight gigabytes of storage. But the OS takes up nine of that somehow. And I, I could see them trying to do this TikTok thing that Apple's done where you've got the cheap device and you've got the performant device um i don't know Which we'll, we'll have to I see. there's a lot of different ways this this could shake out yeah and that could be a good thing if the, the the cost um the cost efficient device isn't garbage you know i think yes. it's good to have that option of a cheaper console for people that don't want to spend that much money that don't care as much about the fidelity of the graphics and the performance and That's also true. if you already have the console to know okay mm-hmm. We're releasing a new one, but you'll still get the games for the next three years. They just may not run as well. Mm-hmm. As long as they don't run like dog shit, it's okay. Yeah. Like if I was buying a console for one game, I would buy the cheap one. That's a good point. Depending on the game, though. Depending well, on the game. I mean, a game yeah. that's going to be beautiful, I want to make that thing as beautiful as possible. But then again, if you don't have 4K, why worry? Yeah. As long as it runs well. I mean, no matter what, at least we know that our controllers are always going to be the nice first party ones, or at least ones built with standards in mind. (laughs) Unlike back in the day when you went over to your buddy's house to play Goldeneye and he said, bro, here's your controller. And he hands you this like weird, chunky Mad Cats piece of shit. I mean, clear plastic and you can see all the insides. It it would be so great if that company (laughs) filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and took all their shitty controllers with them. You know, wouldn't that be great? Well, it would be great. That would be awesome. Bad news for you. They didn't because Chapter 11 is too nice. Chapter 11 is them reorging. This is Chapter 7. Mad this Caps is a complete is, shutdown. Mad Caps is in the new Mad Cats is in the news for a complete liquidation. They filed chapter seven, all the board has been released, and all assets are being sold. So Thank Mad Caps, fucking God. Well, Mad Cat gets a bad rap because early days controllers. They actually did a lot of really good stuff though. They were the premier company for fight sticks. Arcade style fight sticks, oh, they really? were I premier. Didn't know that. I yes. did not know that. They were it's it's not all bad. I, I do like giving them shit. And it's, it's really sad that, you know, people are losing their jobs and livelihoods. I, <laughs> this, this, this sucks, right? But, but The general we, Tom response is, if there's anything <laughs> negative about the company, make it sound right. like the it's whole, the end of the, the whole world. Company, the whole company is just dog shit. If they've done anything wrong in their past ever, it's their absolute dog shit. Valve? Yeah. Ricochet? I have not forgotten. Fuck you. And by the way, Blue Shift was an average game. <laughs> but and I'm watching you. Back Boss Max is more like sad cats. <laughs> In the PS1 64 era, everything they made was really bad outside of memory cards. Um, mm. But honestly, when the Xbox came around, they made some of my favorite Xbox controllers. In fact, the original you, Xbox? You had, that, you had that Xbox 360 controller. That Xbox 360 you? You controller PC? I used constantly was nothing but it was Mad Cats. And it was great. Yeah. It literally yeah. just shit out on me this last week because the cable started, or this last month, sorry, because the cable started to short. Yeah, I played that one. It had uh, the messed up bumpers. Well, no, like that. It was the thumbstick because I tore off the rubber. I worked it off to the point where I just ripped it off. Oh, I thought the bumper felt weird or something. No, the bumpers. Maybe were that's fine. just how it was. Yeah. So that was kind of weird, but otherwise the buttons felt nice enough, I guess. But yeah, Mad Cats hit and miss. Uh, they made okay peripherals for um, Rock Band, but yeah, a lot of people hated them from the go because how shitty they were on the PlayStation and 64. They were just the cheap knockoffs. Yeah, here's it's your a, controller, but, bro. <laughs> you know, if if anything, we can thank Mad Cats for this great meme we now have. Yes. The bro, here's your controller. Yeah, we we wouldn't have that without them. Absolutely. Uh, I think I've still got a Mad Cats N64 controller laying around here somewhere. Nice. Of course. Well, <laughs> of course. That's enough of Mad Cats. Fuck them. They're gone. Bye bye. Um, Mass Effect Andromeda. They finally have patched a lot of the big issues. Well, a lot of the fixable big issues. 
They have Tom and the T-Pose. They fixed some of the animations. They've uh, fixed, I guess, I didn't know about this. There was an issue where the eyes really looked bad. So they fixed the eyes. Yeah. They've reworked a lot of the lip syncing. Um, they've actually reworked some of the quest structures where they had an issue where for a lot of the quests, they would be, you would have to wait for a certain point for them to be able to continue. And like all the quests would hit at the same point. So you go from being stuck on 10 quests to all of a sudden, bam, all these are ready to go. <laughs> so I guess they've worked out some of that. But overall, the same narrative is still there. So by the yeah. end of the year, yeah. we might have a solid Mass Effect with a half-assed story. <laughs> from from what I'm hearing from all the, the big-time, you know, long-time Mass Effect fans is that it, it, after the powerhouse games that were 2 and 3, going back to something that's a really slow plotting start just it, it doesn't feel right but of course you have to right because mass effect 3 started with oh shit it's the end of the world and this game starts with oh hey there's space puppies and stuff go it's, explore it's a new 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 story yeah um and, and there's always going to be a little bit of hardship there but everyone's been saying that you know the first third to half of the game is just a, a slog. It's slow, you don't like anyone, the writing is abysmal, and in the latter half of the game, things get better. It's not great by any means, but it's definitely better. The one but, silver lining is this is supposed to be some of the best combat for a Mass Effect game. No one cares. No one cares. I, I wouldn't say that. Some <laughs> well, people... No one cares. That's I'd true. That some beautiful people Beautiful Katamari had by far the best graphics, the most polygons out of any Katamari Damacy game I have ever played. Did you see those water textures? No one cares. No one cares. What's and that? People, well, beautiful people Katamari bad. was good, by the way. And secondly, some people do care about the combat in Mass Effect. You don't. Some do. Combat is a big portion of the gameplay, and especially for people that are, aren't already invested in the Mass Effect series. I think that would help grip them into, okay, this game is actually fun to play, and now I can care about the story. Because some <sighs> people don't I, care about story. It's an RPG. It's an RPG first. If you don't care about yeah. the story, go back to Call of Duty. No, 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 no. Go, you go ex- back to Unreal you, Tournament. For the record, you expect it to be RPG first. Mm-hmm. They it are not tr- RPG no, first. No, 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 no. They do not have to be. This is not the original trilogy. Their story cannot mm-hmm. match that of the original trilogy. No, I, I get that, but the, the game series is an RPG. No, has That's been. What it's, has been. Mass Effect Andromeda it's an is an RPG. RPG. It's an action. It's an action There's RPG. There's a ton of action. There is shooting And the action has to be it. fun. Yes. I didn't care about the Skyrim story, and even the gameplay wasn't that great, but I still enjoyed it. But uh, Skyrim, the, to me, has not aged well. It, it was very technically not. impressive when it came out, but... I don't give a shit about the story. The The gameplay, I thought, was okay, but every time I pick it up, I put it down an hour later, and I don't touch it for three weeks. But if the combat was really good, you might. Maybe? Yeah, I don't know. I, I still don't give a shit about that world, though. I don't need to care about the world if the game's fun to play, because I don't know shit about Battlegrounds world. I think it's in Russia due to some of the stuff I see, but really, I don't care. It, it all, de- not it all depends. The game, <laughs> it all depends on the game. Dark Souls wouldn't be Dark Souls without the lore and the world building, mm-hmm. and Skyrim wouldn't be Skyrim without you know some of the world building. Even though the story and writing is not good, I would argue that's not true because I don't know any of the stories to any of the Elder Scrolls, and I've enjoyed them thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. I, nev- I never even finished the main quest of Skyrim, but I played that game for like fifty, hundred hours or something. The but, main quest is usually the weakest in the Elder Scrolls yeah, games. Yeah, I Dark just Brotherhood like to kill random. P- yeah, yeah, Dark Brotherhood. <laughs> All right. Anyway, that's Mass Effect. Um, Blizzard had some interesting news that is really questionable. What's going to happen from going forward? But Blizzard has sued uh, the cheap maker or cheap maker Bossland, who was making uh, hacks and uh, different cheat engine type things for. Wow and Overwatch. They successfully sued them for eight point five million dollars. Ooh, so that's a big number for that's Blizzard. A big chunk of change for Blizzard. That's eh, whatever. Blizzard Activision. They print fucking money. But you're talking a small company who is just making cheats. 
So I'm just really curious what kind of precedent this is going to set. Because at what point is something illegal to do with a game? Yeah, so, so Blizzard's legal argument was you are ruining our online multiplayer game. You're ruining the experience for our customers. Um, and they're going to walk away from the game, thereby costing us money. Um, <clears throat> when someone walks away from Overwatch, they're not, you know, paying money to unlock crates or whatever to get cosmetics. They're, they're not, you know, buying the Overwatch merchandise that's out on the shelves. They're not going to go see the Overwatch movie that will undoubtedly happen at some point in time. Um, because, you know, they, all they remember from Overwatch is that one time they couldn't kill that dude, even though they shot him in the face like a hundred times. And, and they do have legal ground to stand on there the cheat programs are actively hurting blizzard's revenue there's a monetary loss there and they can directly correlate players that encounter cheaters in a game that don't come back later or stop spending money on the game it's it's an actual financial loss for them where this gets really interesting is how far can you take that if someone reviews your game and says, wow, this game is utter shit, can you sue them for driving away the people that would have bought your game had they not known it was shit? It, it, there's a really, really weird gray area here and, thanks to this. And the correlation is similar to me of that in pirating this album. There is not a one-to-one -one correlation. And yes, piracy will reduce numbers of sold albums, but no one knows the actual impact. Mm -hmm. And I mean, honestly, the thing that's weird to me is think of Runes, a game like RuneScape. Could Jagex go and start suing people who are using bots to do things because they are getting unfair advantages versus standard players playing normal and they actually could. start if, suing bot companies? If they can demonstrate damages, absolutely. Oh, it's always uh, damages, man. A company can show damages however the fuck they want. I'm just saying, <laughs> if you blink show, while they've... screaming, they can show that you blinking showed that you were bored in the game and actually cost them five players, which would have equaled out to five hundred dollars of memberships for a <laughs> no. year or something. <laughs> I, it's, Somebody get it's, OJ's lawyer. It's yeah, no really shit. it's an interesting yeah. precedent, and I don't know how far this is going to go. Um, on one hand, you know, Blizzard Activision, they're a giant, massive company. They've got a giant, massive legal team. Um, someone like, um, let's say Atlas probably wouldn't have the money to go and sue everyone who might be spoiling cutscenes in their latest game and their biggest franchise, for instance. Um, that said, it might not stop them from trying. Yeah, so um, for those who uh, missed that segue, Atlas is out there right now in the media telling streamers and YouTubers, you are not to show our game past X point in the game. And it's actually even to the point where on the PS4, you are not able to stream natively. They've actually turned off the streaming feature on the game. The only way to stream off a of PS4 is to use a capture card. We're talking Persona 5. Yes, this is for Persona 5. Sorry. Yes. Thank you, Adam. I don't get this. I really don't. It's if I don't want spoilers for Game of Thrones, I avoid the Game of Thrones Twitter conversations. I avoid the Game <laughs> of Thrones blog posts. Right. I don't watch Game of Thrones, so I don't really care. Uh -huh. um, but if, if I'm trying to avoid spoilers for something, I myself can avoid that. Now, if I'm trying to avoid spoilers for Breath of the Wild, which I have been, mm -hmm. I try to avoid watching streams. I, I watched right. a little bit to see the game, but, you know, for like some of the more story moments or when a cutscene starts, I just close the tab. I just mm -hmm. hit the home button on the Roku. I can avoid spoiling the story for myself just because I know the story doesn't mean I'm not going to buy the game. And right. if your game is... 12 hours of movie and 30 minutes of gameplay metal gear solid 4 i probably shouldn't be buying that anyway right if i can just watch a youtube video and get the exact same experience well right. and that, so, that's the point if you can get the same experience and actually enjoy it they don't want that out there it may not be the fact that it's spoiling it's the fact that people want the story and they don't want anyone getting the story for free 
it, this is going to be all over Let's Plays. They can't stem the tide forever. This this yeah. stuff will get out there. It's yeah. the goddamn internet. Uh, and and if you're yes, building but- a video game, if you're building a piece of, of interactive stuff, right? Because video games cover a whole lot of bases nowadays. If mm-hmm. you're building an interactive experience that can be boiled down into a YouTube video without losing any fidelity, you haven't built a video game. You've built a movie where you push buttons sometimes. And some Metal of those Gear Solid sell 4. really good. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 4. No, not quite to that extent, but I understand what you're saying. Um, really and also, I want bad. to address something. Um, there is an interesting thing with Persona 5. It's not that it's been out for years. Persona 5 mm-hmm. actually released in Japan back in October or November. And it has taken them up until this last month to do all the English uh, re-recordings. Oh, okay. So this game has been out in Japan for some time. So anyone who actually gives a shit already knows the story. Anyone who actually wanted to watch the cutscenes with English subtitles has already seen this stuff. I don't get what the big deal is. I think it's Atlas being pricks, frankly. I, I get that they don't want to lose sales because someone's going to watch a video or a Let's Play of it, but let's be real, that stuff's going to be out there anyway. Is Twitch mm-hmm. going to ban all streaming of Persona 5? So you're telling me, just because it's going to happen, it's okay. So if I want no, to no, put no, a not, movie no. up on YouTube, tough shit, I'm putting a movie up on YouTube. I'm saying it's wasted effort. I'm not saying it's okay. I, I don't think... The, the company owns the content, and streaming is in this weird nexus gray area where you've got yeah. people creating content sort of using other content, so it's sort of a remix, but not in a fair use way, but they uh-huh. are additive. It's not just blatant, here's your direct copy, because it's not a direct copy. When you guys are playing Battlegrounds, you're not just showing people, oh, it's Battlegrounds. You People watch because you are interacting with each other, you're interacting mm-hmm. with the Twitch chat, you're doing cool tactic stuff. They're not just watching some guy slapping up Battlegrounds on Twitch, right? There's some sort of additive stuff that you guys add to the stream, and that makes it a little bit different. So it's it's by the letter of the law, Atlas is absolutely in the right. They have every legal right to do this. Morally? It just sucks. Yeah. I don't know. I just think it's going to be weird because I think we might start seeing this on more story-driven games. I mean, we're not going to see this on shooters. Call of Duty's, we will never see this. Even Gears, as story-driven as that was, you're still never going to see that. Right. Um, But I do feel that a precedent might end up getting set and watch out when it comes to Last of Us 2, what kind of restrictions Sony puts on it. You know, I actually... So, for The Last of Us, the whole reason I was so excited to play that game, even before you guys were hyping on it, um, is because I watched the uh, Kids React YouTube channel where they have them play through like the, the intro sequence of the game. And oh, I saw that, yeah. and I was fucking hooked. It was amazing. And that happens a lot with streams. I've watched games. Mm-hmm. I watched Doom, and that's why I went and bought it in the same yeah. hour. So I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. At Twitch and Let's Plays and YouTube videos and everything else that gamers do with these companies' content isn't just, hey, look at me, I'm doing this thing, I want to be a famous YouTube star. It's fucking free advertising. It Take is. what you can get. Yeah. I, I think that helps grow a lot of games. Like, would games like Battlegrounds have gained as much traction as they did if there weren't a bunch of big streamers streaming it constantly the past couple of weeks? I, I watched the trailer and I left it. I left the Steam page. Yeah. I was like, this this looks dull. I don't even care. It's another yeah. DayZ clone, whatever. And then I watched your guys' stream and you guys were talking about it and playing the game. I'm like, wow, okay, this looks pretty cool. I could definitely buy this and I probably mm-hmm. will. It's and I wa- way, way, way better and way cheaper than yeah. paying your marketing department. Yes, but that's only certain games. Some games you don't need yeah. to see to know you're going to want to buy. The Last of Us is not a game you need to see streamed. Um, I don't know about that. Persona is not a game that is trying, honestly, they're not trying to get new players. They know their player base. It is a hardcore ass JRPG. They know and, and their if, player base. If they release a game for their player base that's basically a DVD, they probably don't deserve to make those sales. 
Right? Who's to say they don't deserve it? I mean, the because walking. I didn't. I didn't buy Metal Gear Solid Five. I'm certainly not buying a PS4 to play through Metal Gear Solid Five because it's a big ass fucking cutscene. You it's, have. It's a little better. But you it, have it's... played and loved a game very similar to that. The Walking oh, Dead. Yeah. So oh, I mean, yeah, a lot of them. A lot you, of them. There is, there is no way you can say a company does not deserve the right to sell a game because it is a lot of movies. It, there's, there's a difference. Every company though. deserves to be able to sell whatever the fuck product they want. I'm just saying. I, I'm saying if, if, they can, if the experience can be boiled down that far and, and be that useless in its medium. Right, I wouldn't go watch Zork the movie because it would suck. Because it would be Morgan Freeman reading green text on a black screen. I'm telling you right now, if I was to watch The Walking Dead before buying it, I would never have bought it. I would have. Yeah, I wouldn't have. Because I, I, I wanted yeah. an impact on that story, and I, I got what I paid for. I would not have bought that game had I watched it. I watched half of The Walking Dead Season 2 before I bought it. I don't feel well, bad I about that the, at all in the case of the walking dead half of the point of that the enjoyment of that game is making the decisions and if you're exactly. watching somebody play you're not making the decisions to me now, all I'll of the enjoyment is the story if if now if i bought the stanley parable after watching the trailer which i hardly ever do but if i went to youtube and i watched all of the endings of the stanley parable before i went through them myself i probably wouldn't have bought that game that would have cost them money you, they would have mm -hmm. lost money to YouTube. Now, is that right? No, probably not. That said... They no. have the right to protect their asset. But what, what are you going to do? Are you going to forbid all Let's Plays videos because your game is two hours long or can be condensed in a 30-minute YouTube video? I think we're going to get to the point where this is going to start getting recognized in the same way that other entertainment mediums are in that you're going to start seeing that certain companies are like no you are not putting our music behind your shit on youtube we are not going to have our music out there unless we are putting it out there and and let's be clear there are certain game companies that do this with fucking everything if you basically flash two frames of an image of mario any image of mario nintendo will own uh, literally, they will flag your video and own any revenue you get from that from that point on, and then throw ads all over your shitty video. Uh, and I think that's absolutely shitty of them to do, but they do it. Um, it'll be interesting to see where this streaming stuff goes. Some companies, especially the indies, embrace it because it's free marketing, because they don't have the departments to handle it. Companies like Nintendo, you know, have a 20-year-old mindset with like, oh, it's all of our stuff anyway, so you owe us money. And Atlas, I don't know what the fuck they're doing. I thought they were cool. I just, I think this is yet to get EA doesn't out. care. Bioware doesn't care. They don't care yet, but none of... <sighs> okay, let's be honest. A whole lot of Western developers don't, they don't tend to have this huge story. It doesn't tend to be narrative-driven for the most part where the JRPGs and a lot of the w Japanese games tend to have a heavy narrative. And when your game is heavy narrative, having the narrative out there could prevent people from buying it. And depending. I mean, the, the West is definitely, especially the Indies have been given birth to plenty of walking well, simulators, well, I, I, which I, could definitely be condensed down into a YouTube video. When I'm talking there, I'm have. talking AAA. Style. Okay. I'm, I'm, the indies almost always have really interesting stories because they can go out there. They can risk it. But I just think it's, it's going to get fleshed out. And I think of when this is all said and done, I think this will affect the streaming community. Not from this game, but because of this precedence. And that maybe more companies start to implement a cease and desist mm -hmm. with guidelines. Yeah, I, I, we'll, I can we'll have to say. I hope not, but I mean, I could see that happening for sure. There's, uh, it, there's also, and this is a totally different conversation, but if someone is making a review, you absolutely cannot stop them because that is fair use. It's actually in the copyright law. If, mm -hmm. if you are reviewing or critiquing, uh, the, the legal language is critique, um, or parroting um, a, a form of copywritten content, that you have every legal right to do so. 
Yeah. Yes, and it yes. was to stop people from streaming the whole game and after each cutscene pausing and saying, hmm, I kind of like that. That or, would not be mm, deemed I didn't fair like what use. They did there. With fair <laughs> use, you're only allowed to use certain parts. You no, can't, you can't no, use the no. entire thing. You, you can. Cannot. If it's critique or parody, you absolutely can. No, no, parody, hmm. yes, but in parody, you're not actually using the content. You're parodying the content. In a it critique, depends. you are not allowed to use the entire 100% of the clip. It, it, it depends on how much your, your lawyer is getting paid. How much your what? Your lawyer is getting paid is the answer to that question. <laughs> yeah. that's if, you pay, answer. if you pay your lawyer enough money, you can that's, absolutely use every single minute of a Game of Thrones episode and call it critique. That really sums up everything anyway. How much is, whose lawyer is getting paid more? Who has more legal power? Ah, well, okay. I think that's about all we got for you guys this week. Um, you two have anything else you want to add in there? I mm. think that's it. I, I think Atlas is making a mistake, and I, I could see them backpedaling on this pretty quickly. Or at yeah. least after the game's been out for a month. You, you hate to see it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a fan. I'm just saying I, I understand their point. But anyway, that's it for us this week. So you can always go check out our old content on our YouTube. If you'd like to go check us out, give us a follow. See when we post up our funny ass videos of Battlegrounds and all the bugs and fun shit we do in there. Or you could always tell us our next group topic you want to hear. At, tweet at us at 72 PC Podcast. Let us know what you think. But anyway, until next week, game on. Bye. See you guys. <laughs>